the capacity to survive still we have not achieved the practical implementation of this program completely disturbed by the word called as development then only that nation can make a rapid progress poverty will still persist to continue because people don't have money agriculture is not able to create a sustainable livelihood good morning and welcome to the third session of chapter 9 that's going to be on the environment and sustainable development in the previous chapters we have been speaking about the impact of environment on the economic systems of india now in this chapter in the session we are going to speak about a very very special topic called as sustainable development why because this word sustainable development i want you to remember till the last because that is going to be the key factor that is going to change the nation's development going forward so let's try to understand what is this sustainable development all about the word sustainability which means to say that you can survive you have the capacity to survive in spite of the given situations the given conditions is what the sustainable development is all about now when you look here environment and economy i'm going to draw these two words very close why because both of these words are interconnected they have a very very deep a meaning and connection they are interdependent and they need each other that's what i'm trying to put in the word here that they are connected they are highly dependent on each other so their dependability their factors of growth are closely related they cannot be segregated they cannot be spoken apart but they are one which will try to have an impact on the other now the development that ignores this has its own repercussions has its own effect there are countries in the world which has always tried to understand the ecological importance and balance now when i talk about scandinavian countries like sweden norway hungary denmark poland norway and all those kind of countries have spent a lot and lot of money in terms of maintaining the environment i would also like to give you a special mention to iceland which is one of the world's most precious and a beautiful place in this world now all these countries are very very small countries when compared to india their economy their size and their growth might not be as big as the indian economy but they are all countries who have made a rapid progress and development in terms of the environment as well as economic in growth altogether that is because if you try to understand them they have been trying to preserve the mother nature earth in the best manner possible that is the reason their economy is not completely disturbed by the word called as development unfortunately in india we did not understand the meaning of this word called as development the reason is that we thought development is all about just moving forward destroying all those forests destroying all those natural habitats and rebuilding the entire country all together but that is not what development means development means that you sustain you contain all the environment you contain you preserve the natural resources the minerals the wealth that you have accumulated and then develop the city then develop the country in the course of development we have understood that we have destroyed a great amount of natural habitat a great amount of forestry so that is the reason today we are suffering when we read in the newspapers or in the channels when we see the flood has created an havoc in the city or probably there has been a landslide there has been an earthquake there has been a windfall all these kind of factors 
are being created by man himself. Why? Because at that point of time, we did not think about this natural disasters or calamities. We just thought that once we become developed, once we attain the status and identity of a developed nation, we are done. Nobody can surpass us. Nobody can beat us. But unfortunately, we did not recognize the value of environment. So that is why coming back here, the concept of sustainable development was emphasized by the United Nations Conference on the Environment Day. And they defined it as development means that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future i want you to pay attention there without compromising why because if you belong to the compromising generation if you start thinking that you can compromise you can give away on those factors then we are not going to achieve what we want to do Every time in India, the question of development comes from the basic resources or the basic thought process. What is that basic thought process? We always keep talking about food, shelter and clothing. That's what we have been talking about always. Food, shelter and clothing has always been the basic factor that we have been talking about. The reason for this is that Economic development or the progress has never happened containing these three factors. It has always happened in great areas. Infrastructurally, we have built some super tall buildings or bridges or dams or we have created one of the best express highways in the world. But then coming back to the question of a common man, have we been able to give him what he wants? He wants food. He wants to have a shelter. He wants to have a clothing to cover his body. But we have not been able to understand, analyze and provide that basic need. So still in India, poverty persists. Still in India, problems do persist. And this is one of the reasons why we are still talking about sustainability. We are still talking about developing nation status altogether. Somewhere down the line, we need to understand, we need to make ourselves clear that are we capable of developing by ourselves? Are we capable of taking care of ourselves? We don't have to be an exporter oriented nation always, but we need to be a nation that is able to take care of itself. We need to be a nation that is able to survive through any of the situations given below. Then we can proudly go ahead and say that, yes, we are the most sustainable nation in the world. We are the most developed nation in the world. So now moving forward, I would also like to talk about the sustainable development in the following areas. The use of concept called as needs in the definition is linked to the distribution of resources. I was talking to you regarding about the housing, the clothing factor, the foot factor. So I'm going back to that needs concept one more time to make you understand the importance. Now the sustainability starts from a very, very basic word called as survival, which means given the situation, whether it be a pandemic, whether it's a recession, whether it is a boom or it is an average market, will you be able to survive? Will you be able to go forward without stretching your limits? That is the question of sustainable development. Most of the countries, have tried to understand and ensure upon this factor that their citizens are basically covered from healthcare, from education, from food, from a minimum living conditions altogether. In India, we have been talking about different kinds of policies and programs where we want to uplift the poor, where we want to give chance for the downtrodden, where we want to give an opportunity for the people who have been left out. But then all these stories, all these programs have been good enough on the paper. Still, we have not achieved the practical implementation of this program. So that is where the question again rebounds on us. 
The question is again shooted against you asking you on this factor, will you be able to meet the needs of a common man? So the concept of sustainable development goes back to that same question asking whether the common man's needs are met. That food, shelter and clothing, is it available to all, to that 138 crore people of this country? If the answer is yes, then we have achieved the sustainable development. Then we have done a rapid progress altogether but unfortunately no we have not reached that level we are just making progress day by day to reach to that great level the next thing the seminal report of our common future that gave an about definition explained sustainable development as meeting of basic needs of all so this is what i was trying to tell even before we could get into that report the report which has been given up by a World Bank or by an IMF or by a United Nations Development Program Committee all tries to point out on the factor that how will be a nation able to sustain, survive and take care of the needs of the people. Because if these things are done, if these things are taken into the mind and done, then we have already achieved our success. Meeting the needs of all requirement redistributing of resources is a moral issue. Now, when I talk about this word called as moral issue, I always want to emphasize on this factor that many a times in India, we have always been talking about the divide. The divide between the rich and poor, the gap between the rich and poor, the inequality factors that have always been haunting this nation time again. The reason for this is that many times we need to analyze, we need to understand that resources are not equally distributed among all the people. So somewhere when poverty is being talked about, when poverty emerges back or when the needs are not being met, they are completely ignored. Somewhere where there is an excess of wealth or excess of resources available, the resource again keeps on accumulating there which makes the rich richer and poor poorer. So somewhere we have to strike a balance, come back to the point and make us understand that the meeting of needs, the meeting of a common man's requirement, getting that balance completely will be the position where we can go ahead and say sustainable development has been achieved. So please keep in mind, whenever you come across this word called sustainability, sustainable development in the chapter, all you have to keep in your mind is meeting of common man's needs. Food, shelter and clothing has to come to your top of your mind because only then we are talking about the sustainable development in future. Now, moving forward. The concept of sustainable development extends by different economists. Now, for example, Edward Barbier had once defined that the sustainable development is one which is directly concerned with increasing the material standards of living poor at the grassroots level onwards. Now, let's look at the definition itself. He's now trying to make us understand the quality of living standard. Now, this is slightly complicated. Why? Because the quality of living standard as per Indian subcontinent or when I talk about India is entirely different when we compare this to the European markets or to the American markets. Why? Because in India, the sustainability, the quality of living standard is again on a survival mode. It's again on a, you know, fighting of the fittest that keeps on coming to my mind. The reason is that when we talk about an increased income, education, healthcare, water supply, all these factors are yet to be recognized, acknowledged by the people. There are still many districts, states or villages in India which have not experienced the complete benefit of healthcare or a roadway or sanitation or water supply. They are still struggling. The reason for that is not to just blame the government, but to blame us also. We have ignored them. We were only concerned about the metro cities and the tier two cities development. We somewhere just forgot them saying that we will do the development later. 
So according to Edward Barbier, when we try to go back to that definition, trying to understand the quality of living, that is possible only when every single person of the nation will have the same standard of living compared to that of that rich man, compared to that of that man who is living on the metro cities. So unless and until we are able to standardize on a pattern, unless and until we are able to give a common platform to that hundreds and thousands of people living in our country, we will not be able to achieve the standard of living. We will not be able to achieve a quality in that standards. So that is where we have to concentrate. We have to build upon the basic factors. Now, moving forward, in more specific terms, the sustainable development aims at decreasing absolute poverty of the poor by providing a lasting and a secure livelihood. So somewhere down the lane, let's again go back to this concept or to the chapter called as employment. Now, when you try to understand the unemployment and the employment scenario, which we had discussed in our previous sessions, this is where the sustainability is again coming into picture. Now, I would like to write down this word on the screen called as employment. Why? Because you need to remember this word as far as possible, as long you're a part of economics. Only a country which is able to generate 100% employability, let me again repeat it, 100% employability, which means to say that every single person of that nation is employed, not just shadow employment. He is really working and he is getting a real income altogether then only that nation can make a rapid progress. Then only we will be able to completely remove this factor called as absolute poverty. The main reason for poverty is that because of the joblessness, many people are not able to get a job. It is not just because they are not skilled. It is not because of the fact that they are not educated. It is because of the factor that we are not able to create jobs. We are not able to create a demand function altogether. So unless and until the country takes the effort of creating jobs in the market and tries to employ every single citizen into some format of work, you will not be able to eradicate poverty. Poverty will still persist to continue because people don't have money again to go for their basic needs. So that leads into all kind of illegal activities that leads into frustration, depression and so many other factors. So our aim here is that again when we try to target back onto the word called as sustainable development here. Our aim here is to understand that we have to go on to the generation of employment. Somewhere down the lane in the next four years or five years, India has to become a country which has got 100% employability and then that nation will be able to survive, the nation will be able to go forward. Now, in the next slide, we are going to talk about the sustainable development in the sense of basic needs, particularly to the poor, in terms of especially when I talk about housing sector, energy, water supply or on the agriculture sector altogether. Now, the majority of people who have taken up agriculture as their profession in our country have taken it not because of choice, but have taken it because of chance. Because they do not know what is the real challenges that they start facing once you have taken the profession of agriculture. It is because of lack of power, lack of irrigation system. They are not being given enough financial support. The sector of agriculture turns into sector of poverty. And that is again leading to the question back of sustainable development. Agriculture, which is the backbone of our nation, once upon a time which was contributing 72% of India's GDP, today hardly tries to contribute about 7 to 8 percent or rather than a 10 percent of the GDP. The reason being is that it is not that people do not like agriculture. It is not that people are against agriculture. It is because of the factor that agriculture is not able to create a sustainable livelihood. The farmers are affected. The farmers feel that the profession is not able to make me match my basic needs. I'm not able to go back and satisfy my family in terms of meeting the needs. So again, the question, 
of food, clothing and shelter will persist in that sector. Moment one sector starts getting affected, the question of sustainability will again become a very, very big challenge. So that is one of the reasons where I try to say here that, you know, you need to meet the basic needs across sector, across the vertical, across the horizontal factors altogether, and then we can build up the tower of sustainability. Now, the Brundtland Commission emphasizes on protecting the future generation. Now, this is one report which I want to share with you, where I want to emphasize on the factor that the future generation, the upcoming generation of India is highly talented, innovated, energized crowd altogether. They are enthusiastic about every single thing that they do. But as a nation, we need to understand, appreciate and analyze their talent. We need to promote their talent. We need to make that future generation a sustainable generation. We should not give up on them. So that is where what we need to do here is that we need to provide them all the basic facilities, proper food, proper clothing, a very good shelter and a very good education so that when that generation comes up, they are able to create a sustainable environment. They are able to create good employment for themselves. They are able to generate employment for others and they are able to take the economic development of the country forward. So that is where protecting the future generation lies. It is not just about bringing up the generation. It is all about developing the generation so that they are capable of taking up the next level as far as possible. Now, this is in line with the argument of the environments who emphasize that we have moral knowledge, no doubt about it, or the moral obligation to hand over the planet Earth to our future generation exactly the way how we want it the way it needs to look, the clean green environment altogether. But then if the practices that we have been doing right now are not put in place in proper order, then probably we might not even have a place for the future generation. What I mean by saying here is that if we are not practicing that clean green environment, if we are not teaching our children or practicing ourselves to plant a tree, to keep the environment clean, to make use of the renewable energies, to make use of a cleaner, greener fuel, then we will not have a place. We will not be able to gift our future generation a better place to stay. So the practice is now. The sessions are now. This is for us to take that time and move forward and create a sustainable environment. At least we should leave the next generation the stock of quality of life. Now that word is very, very important. Many a times, most of us will ask this question in our mind, in with our friends, in any of the group discussion. Had I been born in America, had I been born in Japan, had I been born in Russia or in England or some other place, look at those people, how do they live? How is their quality of life better when compared to that of Indians? The reason is that we are not getting into a comparison here, but what we are trying to do is that we are trying to understand the standards. Somewhere the quality of life is better. Somewhere the opportunities are better. Somewhere the living standards are even better. Somewhere people feel that there is a need for development. There is a need for pushing up the basic needs. That factor we should not give it to our children. That factor we don't want that lacuna to happen in terms of giving it to our future generation. We want our future generation to relish their life. We want our future generation to understand economic independence with environment sustainability because these things will definitely matter for the kids. These things will definitely drive them to the next level as far as possible. So now moving forward, the present generation should also promote development that enhances the natural and built environment in the ways that are compatible. One, when I'm going to talk about the conservation of natural assets, yes, we need to teach them how do you need to conserve and preserve the environment. It is not going to be that easy. Why? Because unless and until we practice this and we tell them what are the best practice, what are the methods of doing it, this is not going to happen so easily. So we need to take up a training. We need to assess ourselves and then pass on the knowledge to our future generation. 
preservation of regenerative capacity. Probably this is very, very important for all of us. Nowadays, it, it is so common that, you know, for anything and everything, we are dependent on a gadget. We are dependent on an app. We are dependent on some electronic system. Now, why that is happening is that one side we have felt the convenience, the usage and the better facility. The other side, what is happening is that we are not giving any work to our brain. We are not giving any sort of thought process that can generate better ideas. So the other way, what we need to do here is that we need to make our generation understand, analyze the usage of tools and techniques that can regenerate fresh ideas, that can regenerate systems that can survive for a longer time period. Instead of just teaching them the shortcuts, please also teach them the way how things can be innovated for a better future tomorrow. The way how a plan can be grown. The way how you need to understand about food sustainability. The way how you need to share resources. The way how you need to develop that resources. All those factors will definitely help them to build a sustainable environment. Now, avoiding the imposition of added cost and risk in the future generation. That's what Herman Daly had once said, a leading environment. He said that on the sustainability, the following needs to be done. The first thing is limiting the human population to a level of carrying capacity. Now, this is one thing which is very, very applicable and true for the Indian subcontinent. Why? Herman Daly's understanding about environment or the environmental situation was primarily from the population perspective. He wanted to go back and tell people clearly that every nation has got a capacity. And if you try to go against the capacity, if you try to go above the capacity, automatically the system collapses, it crashes down. So Herman Daly's observation was very, very clear where he wanted to say that the carrying capacity of a nation. Now, let's say for in India, if the carrying capacity of India was only about 80 crores example, but then we have gone up to 138 crores. So when you see that the carrying capacity is 80 crores and the value has gone all the way up to 138 crores, that means the remaining 58 crores is an overload overload to the system because of which again natural resources have to be destroyed they have to be disturbed there is an over usage of the natural resources now what happens is that the sustainability again comes down why because we are depending too much on the nature we have to withdraw back from the nature too many factors and again the environment is going to come down he, he just puts a very, very simple example called as the Plimsoll line. Now, the Plimsoll line is what you see in ships carrying those huge load. Moment the Plimsoll line is touched, that means that is the maximum capacity. Now, you can't just keep on overloading the ship again and again because the ship will sink if it's not able to bear the weight. So similarly, if you are overloading the nation with people, and people again and again, the nation will get completely crushed under the weight and the sustainable development will completely come to an end. So that is why we need to be 100% sure on the factor that how do we go about on the population control, the population check altogether. If you keep on expanding, if you just keep on believing that by adding people to your country, you are going to build a valuable asset, you need to rethink because assets are needed, but definitely not to the extent that it collapses the entire system. So as per Herman Daly, this is a point, this is a time for us to think, go back and analyze that are we extending our threshold limits altogether. Now, moving forward, in the absence of the Plimsoll line for the economy, the human scale grows beyond the carrying capacity, as I was trying to say, and this deviates from the development. See, most of the countries which are highly populated, like India, China, or probably even Pakistan, if you try to understand these countries' problem, it's primarily because of people. There are too many people, too many systems, too many caste, creed, religion, problems, all those factors that start drawing in. Of course, we do not want to step aside from economics. But then if you try to understand the economic development of a country, that is possible only when you have a limited population. I would just like to draw you an example here. 
India versus Singapore. In no way Singapore can match India in size or strength. Very, very small island country. It's a very, very small island altogether. But then look at the developmental model of Singapore. The reason why Singapore grew to be the only South Asian nation to have the developed nation status, the reason was that they controlled the population, they controlled the immigration and emigration factors very clearly. They wanted to have a limited population, they wanted to build the quality of life to the best level possible. They wanted to see that every citizen is covered under all the best possible schemes and facilities that have been given by the government. So they wanted to primarily develop the island into a continent. They didn't just want to have a place where you just keep on building up hotels or towering sky buildings and all those factors. They just wanted to build a nation sustainable among themselves. Today, Singapore is not developed in terms of going in population ratio. It is developed in terms of the economic progress. It is developed in terms of financial resources. It is developed in terms of technology. All this has been possible because they put a check on the population growth. They understood what is the carrying capacity of the nation. They also understood what needs to be taken forward in terms of development. And that is why you see that the sustainable development has been happening at a rapid pace in Singapore. Now, when you look at the technological progress, there should be an input efficiency and not input consuming. Again, I would like to go back to Singapore for a while here. Why? Because look at the word input efficient. If there are 100 engineers that are being produced by the country Singapore, the 100 engineers are being put to an efficient use altogether. So the 100 inputs that has been generated by the country are made to work in such a situation where they are able to generate a quality output out of them. But what happens in India on a contradictory note is that we are able to generate about 7.5 lakh graduates every year. 7.5 lakh graduates are graduating out of this country. But what is the use of the 7.5 lakh? Not all of them are able to get a job. Again, that lands up in unemployment problem. Again, the question goes back whether I am sufficiently qualified. Again, it goes back whether after that post-graduation, will I be able to get a job? So the question on question in terms of sustainability still survives. All this problem can be solved the moment you have a check on the population. The next thing, non the renewable resources should be extracted on a sustainable basis. Let us not go completely in terms of extracting the last drop that was given by Mother Nature. It is not mandatory for us. We can go on the non-renewable, I mean the renewable resources in terms of the solar energy and all those factors. It's not that every time we have to just go on mining, every time we go on petroleum exploration and deplete the nature. We need to start utilizing solar energy, the green fuel efficient energies and factors that will be able to develop our nation. And for the non-renewable resources, the rate of depletion should not exceed the creation of renewable resources. This is very, very important. I would like to give you a small example here. When you talk about savings and expenditure, the expenditure should not be in such a way that it completely depletes your savings. You need to have an expenditure, but not at the cost of your savings. So similarly, the non-renewable resources should not be extracted in such a way that the renewable resources also get completely destroyed. So we need to create and then we need to utilize. Inefficiencies arriving from pollution should be corrected. That's very, very important for a country like India, where millions of people are living, thousands of industries, a lot of pollution and factors that are literally destroying the lives of people. So somewhere down the lane, when you find there is a leakage in the system that needs to be plugged in very, very clearly, we cannot afford any more air pollution, water pollution or noise pollution, which will hamper the quality of living standards in India. Moving forward, with this, we come to the end of this wonderful session. I hope and believe that this session was interesting, informative and educative. In the next session, we will be talking about some more in terms of the sustainable development and the various factors of environment. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today.